welcome back to the 1.5 beta. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the Imperial Cutter, which will be the biggest and most expensive ship in the game when the 1.5 update goes live. We'll take a look at its base stats. We will see how much better its stats will be with the best modules equipped. And of course, we will take a look at its combat capabilities. As for the looks, it has the familiar Imperial look we all know and love. And I have to say that it looks like an oversized clipper, but that's not a bad thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at its stats now. But before we do that, let's take a look at the cockpit and the visibility and of course the interior which is quite impressive. It looks like a luxury ship and uh, the visibility from the cockpit will be perfect for combat but also for sightseeing. Okay, so let's go ahead now and take a look at the stats of the Imperial Cutter with its base loadout. It may be a big ship, but it will also be fast. Its top speed, normal base speed, will be at 202 meters per second, and its push speed can go up to 323 meters per second. The maneuverability is only at level 2, the same with the Corvette. And the shields, the shields and the armor are quite good, better than the Corvette actually. 703, the value of the shields, and 720, the value of the armor. With its starting loadout, the Imperial Cutter has an available power of 24, which is quite good, it's the same as the Corvette, a maximum cargo capacity of 164 tons, with this certain loadout, and a slightly better jam rate at 8.21 light years. It also has 9 internal compartments, of which 2 class 8, 3 class 6, 2 class 5, 1 class 4, and 1 class 3, and of course the new planetary approach suit. As for the hard points, the Imperial Cutter also has 7 hard points, 1 huge, 2 large, and 4 medium, and I'm really very curious to see how we can utilize these four medium. I'm really happy that it doesn't have small hard points like the Corvette. It's really a waste these two small hard points on the Corvette. And of course, A to tilt mounts. We're gonna take a look later at uh, its combat capabilities. For now, let's go ahead and equip it with the best available modules and see how much better the stats can, uh, can become. With the best available modules equipped, the Imperial Cutter has an available power of 36, which will be more than enough to equip it with everything we want. And this amazing cow capacity, 792 tons, the best cow capacity in the game. And uh, if we combine it with uh, laden jam rates at 14.08 light years, yes, this ship will be the best trading vessel in Elite Dangerous. And of course, have in mind that we can increase the jam rates by downgrading most of the modules to its lightest version. The unladen jam rate is at 20.93 light years, which is also excellent. Something else I would like to mention about the Imperial Cutter is the fact that it can be equipped with an A8 shield generator, and it will be the second ship in the game with an A8 shield generator, along with the Type 9. We're not gonna go into the details, we're not uh, gonna take a look at its capabilities and the different activities of Elite Dangerous, we will wait for the release of the update for a more detailed review. Today we're gonna take a look mostly at its combat capabilities and how we can handle it, how good it is in combat, how easily it can kill enemies or not. It is obvious that it will be a much better trading vessel than any other vessel in Elite Dangerous. Let's see how good it will be in combat as well. For the combat loadout I had some ideas, I went to test the railguns or the medium hardpoints, but unfortunately the replacement is not that good and uh, we should avoid equipping on all four of them fixed weapons and try to use them all together. So in order to utilize the huge hardpoint I have equipped five cannons, four medium, one huge, all gimbal, it will be easier for us, and uh, two large beam lasers to take down the shields of our enemies. Again. 6 shield boosters, 5 A0, 1 D0, and 2 hit shield launchers. I think we're gonna need the hit shield launchers. An A8 shield generator and an A7 shield cell bank. So let's get out of here, take a look at its combat capabilities, but first of all, let's see how fast it is. So let's take a look at uh, the speed of the cutter, and let's see how fast it is. With 4 pips on the engine, our normal speed is at 225, and if we boost, like the sound, 360, almost 360. 360. It's quite fast actually. Let's go after this python. Let's see what we can do against it. It's a bit difficult to 
to maneuver with the with the cutter, especially in the resource extraction side, you can see that we are drifting all over the place. Let's try to get closer to that python before the NPC kill it. Okay, let's start the attack. As for the cannons, we will have to be close to use them and be sure that we are not going to miss. It's a difficult ship to to handle. Under attack. Wow. Although it has the same maneuverability with the Corvette, it's a lot harder to turn around and use it in combat. Yeah, not bad damage with our cannons when we can hit. Let's assist in this fight against this clipper is much more maneuverable than uh, the cutter. Let's go in there now that is uh, destructive and try to take it down. Let's put more power on weapons and go for it. I think we're gonna have some problems here against a more agile ship. Under attack. Target shields offline. Now that we are closer, we can attack with our cannons. Yeah, it's a hard ship to handle. It is better in hit and runs. I don't think you can uh, fly the cutter like other vessels with better maneuverability. Although it has the same maneuverability with the Corvette, the difference is huge in the battlefield. Of course there are other combinations of weapons that could help against enemies such as some gimbal lasers and uh, plasma accelerators. It's not bad, the far power is not bad, but uh, the maneuverability and the way it drifts around, something crashed on us I think, it's a bit problematic. Let's go after one more python, this time us versus python, no npc nearby to assist us. Let's try to get closer so we can use our cannons, but not too close. Yeah, the cells are down. The far power is good, especially when we hit with a huge cannon. But yes, we have to aim carefully, or else it's very easy to to miss. Down thirty-seven percent, and this will finish soon. Although the cutter is not a bad vessel for combat, I think it's not your typical combat vessel. It's not the vessel, the ship that you want to take in a resource extraction site, for example. And um, it may be better in a wing with others assisting it. This was the Imperial Cutter and after the release of the 1.5 update it will be the best rating vessel in Elite Dangerous with an amazing cargo capacity and a decent laden jump range. And despite the fact that it is a bit hard to handle it and maneuver with it in combat situations, 
you can use it for this activity as well. Thank you very much for joining my watch in this video, I'm Skid of Love and I will see you next time. Bye bye.